What if I told you that it's a well-documented fact that many anti-colonialist and anti-imperialist African leaders like Patrice Lumumba, Amilka Cobra, Ruben Unyombe, Silvanus Olympio, Eduardo Modlani, Thomas Sankara, Bartholomew Boganda, and many other African superheroes were assassinated by Western powers or their agents. Do you know that the reason many of these superheroes and leaders were targeted by those Western powers wasn't because they were terrorists or maybe mass murderers of their people, but due to their opposition to colonialism, imperialism, and the exploitation of African people and resources. It's important to note that all these African anti-colonialists had one thing in common. Please pay attention. None of them was a capitalist. Why some of them, such as Amika Cabral, Thomas Sankara, Ruben Unyube, and Samura Mache were massive communists and sought to establish socialist systems in their countries. Others, such as Papa Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, and uh, Julius Nyerere, were social democrats and nationalists. And despite the ideological differences of these African heroes, they were nonetheless united in their opposition to colonialism and their vision for a more just and equitable future for their people. And this was a big threat to Western influence on the continent. Hence, they were all targeted for assassination or other forms of political violence. They were all marked for death. So, as I promised, this page, Africa is not in Hollywood, aims to educate and inspire Africans, especially the youth and others who care to know about the lives and legacies of these remarkable individuals who made significant contributions to the struggle for freedom and self-determination in Africa. But before I go any further, I would like to say, I would like to take a moment to express my profound gratitude for your support and for following my TikTok account after I made that video last week. And as an Africanist, it is incredibly rewarding to know that this topic resonates with such an amazing audience. Your follows, likes, comments and shares provided me with the motivation to to continue with this uh this project and i want to say thank you all for making this happen so without wasting more of your time or as they will say without much ado let's get into it Patrice Lumumba became the Congo's first Prime Minister after it gained independence in 1960. But he was only in office for a few months before he fell out with the country's former colonial ruler, which led to him being ousted in a coup, imprisoned, tortured and later executed. Today, I will be talking about one of the most high-profile assassination cases in African history, that of Patrice Lumumba the first democratically elected Prime Minister of the Congo. But who exactly was Patrice Lumumba? Who killed him and why was he killed? Patrice Emery Lumumba was born in the Belgian Congo, now the Democratic Republic of Congo, in 1925. And because Lumumba was not only intelligent but also a charismatic leader, he quickly rose to prominence in the anti-colonial movement in the Congo. Ideologically an African nationalist and a pan-Africanist, he played a significant role in the transformation of the Congo from a colony of Belgium into an independent republic. He was a founding member of the Mouvement National Congolais, MNC, a political party that advocated for independence from Belgian colonial rule. Now, in June 1960, Congo gained independence and Lumumba became the country's first democratically elected prime minister. As a passionate and eloquent speaker, he used his position to advocate for African unity and the establishment of a truly independent Congo. 
Now, he quickly gained popularity among the Congolese people, but also faced opposition from Belgium and the United States, who saw him as a threat to their interest in that region. A mutiny in the Congolese army broke out shortly after the country's independence in 1960, and this marked the beginning of the Congolese crisis, coupled with the secession of Katanga. Now, Lumuba appealed to the United States and United Nations for help to suppress the Belgian Bat Katangan secessionist led by Moise Chobe. Having been convinced by the Belgian authorities that Lumumba was a communist, anti-white and anti-Western, both the US and the UN declined to help. Now these fears of communism were heightened when Lumumba then turned to the Soviet Union for assistance, a move which the CIA regarded as a classic communist takeover. This led to escalating schism with President Joseph Kasavubu and uh, the Chief of Staff Joseph Desiree Mobutu as well as the United States and Belgium. But for a better understanding, let's know what really started the mutiny. Now, on the morning of 5th July 1960, General Emil Janssens, the commander of the Force Public, a white Belgian, summoned all personnel on duty at Camp Leopold in response to growing excitement within the Congolese, uh, the Congolese ranks. He commanded that the army should maintain its discipline. And for emphasis, you know what he did? He wrote on a blackboard, before independence is equal after independence which means you are not independent yet. This sparked a series of protests and that evening, the Congolese sacked the canteen in protest of Jensen's. Lumumba fired Jensen's the next day and promoted all Congolese soldiers by one grade. He Africanized the army by naming Sergeant Major Victor Lundula as General and Commander-in-Chief and uh, Colonel and former soldier Joseph Mobutu as Army Chief of Staff. Despite Lundula's inexperience and rumors concerning Mobutu's ties to Belgian and US intelligence services, Lumumba still made these promotions. Now, Lumumba's socialist and nationalist political views as well as his desire, his strong desires for Congo's independence and sovereignty made him a threat to the interest of these Western powers, particularly Belgium, the former colonial power in the Congo. And talking about interest, I mean Belgian interest. And with Belgian interest, I mean Union Minier de Haute Katanga. Now pay attention. Union Minier de Haute Katanga, which is literally translated as Mining Union of Upper Katanga, was a Belgian mining company with a minority British share, which controlled and operated the mining industry in the Copper Belt region in the Congo. Now for us to understand why Lumumba was killed, we need to talk about this because this is very important. In 1959, Belgian profits from the Union Minier were in excess of 3.5 billion Belgian francs at that time. It is reported that in 1960, the Union Minier had annual sales of 200 million USD. It had produced 60% of the uranium in the West 73% of the cobalt and 10% of the copper. In a nutshell, Union Minier owned everything. In fact, it owned Congo. A spokesman for Union Minier is at this moment presenting his report to the shareholders. We have seen more than half a million people butchered, mutilated, raped, and torn limb from limb. Through all these events, your directors and I have asked ourselves only one question. To what extent will the operations of your company be affected? We are pleased to record that the events of this particular week need not in any way 
directly concern us. Now, I hope you understand what I meant by Belgian interest. So, because of its gigantic economic interest in the mineral-rich Katanga province, coupled with the fact that Lumumba was planning to nationalize the mining industry and reduce foreign control over the country's resources, Union Minier played a significant role in his assassination. So Union Minier and other Western corporations lobbied their respective governments to support efforts to remove Lumumba from power. It supported secessionist movements in the Katanga province, which aimed to break away from the rest of Congo and establish a state, a separate state, under the control of the Western interest. It's also important to put into cognizance that the company Union Minier had a close relationship with the Belgian government, which had a vested interest in maintaining its economic and political influence in the Congo. Following Lumumba's arrest and imprisonment by forces of Colonel Joseph Mobutu, who had received support from Western countries, Union Minier's executive met with Mobutu and other leaders of the secessionist movement to discuss the future of the mining industry in the region. Now, during these meetings, plans were made for Lumumba's assassination. So, Lumumba was deposed in a coup led by Mobutu with the support of Belgium and the CIA. He was taken to Katanga province where he was held captive by his political opponents. He was subjected to physical abuse and humiliation before being transferred to a different location. All senior officials in Katanga were Belgian. The province had 35,000 whites who enthusiastically supported Chamba. The Katangese army, or gendarmerie, was run by white officers, mostly Belgian, with a sprinkling of French mercenaries. Without these, he could not maintain his secession and the UN saw their removal as its prime objective. After several and unsuccessful attempts to negotiate his release, Lumumba was handed over to a group of mercenaries led by Belgian and Congolese officers. Lumumba and his two close associates, Maurice Mpolo and uh, Joseph Okito, were taken to a remote area in Katanga where they were severely beaten and tortured. After a brief arranged trial in a, in a secessionist state, they were found guilty of treason and sentenced to death. On the evening of January 17, 1961, Lumumba and his two associates were taken to a scheduled spot where they were shot and killed by firing squad. After Patrice Lumumba was shot, after he had been killed, Belgian police officers transported his remains to a, another remote area where they were cut into pieces. His body was cut into pieces. His body was dismembered and dissolved in sulfuric acid. The acid was used to destroy any physical evidence of Lumumba's death and to prevent his body from being discovered. The disposal of Lumumba's body was a deeply symbolic act reflecting the desire of Lumumba's political opponents to erase any trace of his legacy and to send a strong message to other African leaders who might challenge their authority. Any other African leader who might challenge the Western authority. The circumstances of Lumumba's death have been the subject of several investigations and inquiries over the years. But up till date, no one has ever been held accountable for his assassination. His death remains a tragedy and a stark reminder of the dangers faced by those, any African, those who dare to challenge entrenched political and economic interests. This is a summary of the events surrounding Patrice Lumumba's predicament and I could not put everything in just this one video. If you want to know more, 
please inbox me and I will let you know. So thanks for joining and I hope to see you next week with another story. I won't tell you uh, yet. It's going to be like a surprise. It's suspense. I know a lot of you want me to talk about a lot of people. Don't worry. I'm going to talk about all the African heroes that were assassinated. All of them from all over Africa. So just stay tuned and maybe it may be your hero or our hero. So thank you and see you next week. <laughs>